All right, good afternoon. Uh, as to you're done with me, we will be joined uh, by our good friend Imran Riza, who is the UN uh, resident coordinator, humanitarian coordinator in Lebanon. He'll be here to brief you on uh, the d challenges facing uh, Lebanon currently. Uh, I will start off with a statement on the latest developments in Ukraine. The Secretary General strongly condemns today's attack, which reportedly killed at least 49 people and injured several others in the Kupiansk district of the Kharkiv region of Ukraine. Attacks against civilians and civilian infrastructure are prohibited under international humanitarian law, and they must stop immediately. The Secretary General extends his condolences uh, to the families of the victims and wishes a prompt recovery to all those injured. Uh, also, our humanitarian coordinator in uh, Ukraine, Denise Brown, also issued a statement condemning uh, the attack. In her statement, uh, she called the images arriving from the uh, site of the attack uh, absolutely horrifying. Our colleagues tell us that humanitarian workers in the country are mobilizing assistance to civilians harmed in the attack. Um, also, I want to flag this morning the Secretary General and the President of the International Committee uh, for the Red Cross, Mirjana Spolaric, issued a joint appeal to establish new international rules on autonomous weapons system. They say that specific prohibition and restrictions are needed to shield present and future generations uh, from the consequences of their use. Uh, autonomous weapon system, which are generally understood as weapon systems that select targets and apply forth force without human intervention, pose serious humanitarian, legal, ethical, and security concerns. In the current security landscape, setting clear international red lines will benefit all states, uh, the Secretary General and Ms. Uh, Spolaric said. The autonomous targeting of humans by machines is a moral line which we must not cross. Machines, are, machines with the power and discretion to take lives without human involvement should be prohibited under international law. That was shared uh, with you. Uh, just a quick update from our team in Armenia, led by the resident coordinator Natalia uh, Nachil Natsivilishvili uh, is boosting support to national authorities as they address the need for more than 100,000 refugees who've recently arrived. The UN Refugee Agency is continuing the distribution of locally produced, procured core relief items requested by local municipalities, and these include foldable beds, bedding sets, blankets, and um, any, uh, these are near the border in Gorish and Vak municipalities and near the capital, Yerevan. For its part, the UN Population Fund uh, also is continuing its distribution of dignity kits and is working with local service providers to prevent gender-based violence. UNICEF trains social workers in child protection emergency settings and has also established the first of two support centers in the main refugee recipient towns of Gorsh, with the Armenian Red Cross helping reconnect families and separated children. The UN development for its part is purchasing equipment to address the rising needs um, of refugees and host communities. And these equipment include solar panels and water heaters along with bio toilets. Turning to Libya, our humanitarian colleagues there tell us that survivors of catastrophic flooding in the northeast of the country urgently need shelter, protection, health care, including mental health care, and as well as water, sanitation, and hygiene supplies. That's according to a new assessment that was carried out in the areas impacted by Storm Daniel. Buildings were severely damaged by the floods in more than a third of lo locations assessed by interagency teams. Some 42,000 people are still displaced, according to the International Organization for Migration. Many need cash to cover rent and support shelter repairs. The water supplies are available. They're not always safe and not always affordable. Nearly two-thirds of health facilities are either out of service or only partially functioning, according to the WHO, and more than 100 health workers have been, were killed during the floods. Meanwhile, UNICEF says nearly 100 damaged schools remain closed. We and our partners have reached 125,000 people with relief and protection, uh, relief items and protection services. 
But to continue these efforts, we need reliable funding. To date, our flash appeal of more than $70 million uh, to help the survivors is only uh, one-third funded. Um, the resident and humanitarian coordinator for the UN in Sudan, Clementine Inquerta Salami, uh, warned today that the country's population is balancing on a knife's edge. Um, and she said this as Sudan is gradually consumed by the ongoing conflict, with some 5.4 million men, women, and children having fled their homes. Sudan is, fast, uh, become, is the fastest growing displacement crisis in the world, with half of the country's population, that's 24.7 million human beings, now requiring humanitarian aid. Ms. Nikwata Salami also warned that the conflict could reach areas like Jazeera State, the country's breadbasket. On the health front, 70% of all hospitals are no longer functioning. She expressed concern about battling cholera outbreaks in a war zone, as the current heavy rains and floods could lead to more outbreaks of waterborne diseases. We and our partners have reached now 3.6 million people and are working with and through Sudanese humanitarian workers, civil society organizations, and non-governmental organizations. The $2.6 billion humanitarian appeal uh, for Sudan is only 32.8% funded. We need more resources to help more people. Um, moving south to South Sudan, uh, Nicholas Haysom, uh, the Secretary General Special Representative in that country and head of our peacekeeping mission there, addressed the 32nd plenary of the Reconstruct Reconstituted Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission. He did that in the capital, Juba, today. He said that a sense of urgency is required to progress with the implementation of the roadmap. With just 14 months until scheduled elections, Mr. Hasem noted the need to reconstitu reconstitute and resource key electoral institutions like National Constitutional Review Commission, National Election Commission, and the political parties. Uh, council. He warned that in the absence of functioning political parties, council, no party has been able to register lawfully, thereby creating a strong perception of lack of a level playing field amongst the various political parties. And in Mauritius, uh, our team, our UN team there, has welcomed the Mauritius Supreme Court's landmark decision, which was taken yesterday, to decriminalize consensual same-sex relations. Resident Coordinator Lisa Singh said the court's decision to overturn an obsolete, obsolete colonial law demonstrates a commitment to non-discrimination and to leaving no one behind. She added that the UN team and regional and international partners welcome Mauritius' decisions to the growing list of African countries protecting the human rights of everyone, including LGBTIQ plus people. And at 1.15, if you have no plans for lunch, um, I would encourage you to head down to the ECOSOC chamber where there will be a special event to commemorate the 75th anniversary of special political missions. As you know, the first special political mission was deployed in 1948 after the General Assembly mandated a UN mediator to Palestine and the subsequent appointment of Folk um, Bernadotte uh, as the UN uh, mediator. The event is jointly organized by the Department of Political and Peacebuilding Affairs, the permanent missions of Finland and Mexico. Speakers include our chef de cabinet, Courtney Rotre, the Under Secretary General for Political and Peacebuilding Affairs, Rosemary De Carlo, as well as the Secretary General's Envoy for Colombia, Yemen, and the Horn of Africa. And as I said, you're all invited. Um, today is an international day we can all learn from. Today is International Teachers Day. Jesus. Um, 44 million additional teachers are still needed worldwide to achieve quality education for everyone everywhere. In a post on Twitter, the Secretary General invites everyone to celebrate the values of teaching and commitment to reverse the current teacher shortage. And I would not be here without some great teachers. So, Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. Um, the Copernicus uh, Climate Group uh, data released today uh, said September was the hottest September ever by a very significant amount. Does the Secretary General have any comment? Well, 
I think sadly this is no, uh, no surprise. We've been uh, living in the hottest uh, summer on, um, on record. I think it's just one more piece of scientific data um, that we hope will motivate uh, people around the world and especially political leaders to make uh, bold to take bold action and make bold decisions to help us uh, fight climate change. On a completely different subject, uh, are there any talks going on anywhere regarding the Anything? Black Sea Grain Initiative? Uh, <laughs> uh, nothing that I'm able to share with you at this, uh, at, at this point. Uh, Michelle. That wasn't a total denial. Uh, you, you, I, a question is asked and... Um, Okay. Okay. You can't give us any detail about not, talks not at might this be point. happening. Not at this but point. Talks but I, are as happening? we can, you know, we we uh, I think as the Secretary General has been very clear in his uh, determination in 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 regard to uh, ensuring that you, Russian and Ukrainian grain and, and fertilizer are fully out to market in a pred predictable manner and. Both Rebecca Greenspan and um, Martin Griffiths are working in that direction. But talks are happening? Is that, that's as many words as you'll get out of me right now, today. Okay. Um, just on the attack that you mentioned mm -hmm. in Ukraine, does the UN have any assessment on who might be responsible for that attack? Uh, you know, I think uh, I would refer you to what Denise Brown said. She condemned ru this Russian attack. Madam. Damilala Banjo Dagfellow. Um, I have two questions mm -hmm. um, on the Kenya led uh, mm -hmm. mission um, to Haiti. So there hasn't been um, parliamentary approval for this uh, mission in Kenya itself. Um, shouldn't this have been the first step even before uh, it's presented to um, the Security Council? Um, still on that, um, are there mechanisms in place to ensure that uh, the Kenya-led mission to AT um, abides by international law, given um, Kenyans' police um, reputation for human rights abuses? Um, are there strict guidelines that they must follow? Sure. On, uh, on the first part, it's not for me to comment on internal Kenyan political processes, right? I mean, that's a question you need to ask the Kenyan uh, mission, the Kenyan authorities. Um, on the issue of, of, uh, of human rights, um, I think the Secretary General has stressed um, that it is important on preventing any misconduct by any uh, police uh, that will be deployed by any country uh, within the context of, the, of, of Haiti. Uh, and he'd advocated for some very robust um, prevention and response frameworks in that uh, in in that regard. Uh, it is um, it is important that anyone who is deployed to Haiti from any country uh, do uh, be deployed and un and act under a framework of protecting uh, people's human rights. Yep. Yeah. Before I ask my question. I am no longer with Hurriyet anymore. I am with the Sözcü TV and newspaper, which is Sözcü means spokesperson in Turkish. So Maybe that's my next, my, it's my next project, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, my question is now, do, do you have any statement about the latest development in northern Syria? You know, today there are reports that uh, Turkish drone shot down by US aircraft, and you know, it's getting serious. I think there. we're... we're uh, we're very concerned about the latest rounds of violence uh, that we're seeing, uh, and again, uh, it creates these situations where civilians uh, pay uh, pay a very high price. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of follow up. Um, what efforts has the UN made to reduce the conflict in northeast Syria? Uh, as you know, like even this morning, the Turkish drones killed six Kurdish people in northern Syria. Well, I mean, uh, our efforts uh, have always been uh, focused on finding a political solution, 
right? And I think Gary Pedersen was here not long ago. He spoke to you outside of the Security Council. Um, there is a framework set out by the Security Council. It is important that all concerned uh, work towards the implementation of that framework and support the work of Mr. Pedersen. Evelyn. Yes, um, you <coughs> asked for quite a large contribution uh, for aid. How is it being distributed? Are there UN workers in Sudan that can distribute Well, I, I think what I, what I just said is that we, we have we have international UN staff, mostly folk in Port Sudan. We are working. We are working with uh, Sudanese NGOs, Sudanese humanitarian workers, and our Sudanese partners uh, in sending out and uh, and having the sending out the aid uh, that is necessary. And they can distribute it. Well, they uh, they're on they are on the front lines uh, about uh, they're on the front lines of this of this conflict. I mean, they can they distribute it? They have to work around checkpoints and, and conflict and working in very difficult, uh, very difficult situations. Yes, Margaret. Uh, Steph, speaking on Sudan, any um, progress in replacing Mr. Perthes as head of the mission? Uh, progress will be announced from here when progress has been achieved. Any, any names on the short list you care to share? Is this your first rodeo? <laughs> Hope yeah. springs internal. Hope springs internal. Uh, I do want to share the, uh, a more detailed reaction to the events in, in, in Syria, um, which is that the Secretary General is deeply concerned about the drone attack on a military academy graduation in Homs, which reportedly resulted in dozens of casualties, including civilians and numerous injuries. The Secretary General is also deeply concerned about the retaliatory shelling by pro-government forces on multiple locations in northwest uh, Syria and emerging reports of casualties. A nationwide ceasefire is essential uh, for a meaningful political process to implement Security Council Resolution 2254. The Secretary General strongly condemns all violence in Syria and urges all parties to respect their obligations under international law. He also recalls that civilians and civilian infrastructure must be protected in accordance with international humanitarian law at all times. Okay, Stefano, and then we'll go to our guest. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, the European Union apparently um, reached a, a deal uh, on how to handle migrants and also um, political, um, um, well, we can call it the refugees and, and so on. Uh, do, do you have any reaction? And uh, do you think that, the, the, I mean, are you looking for something that is in this agreement? I, I would, um, I would uh, refer you to both IOM and UNHCR at this point uh, for an immediate reaction. Sorry, we'll go to Benno and then we'll go to the guest. Thank you, Steph. Sorry if I was not clear enough. Um, you just told us that the Russian attack in Ukraine is against uh, international humanitarian law. Can a country that violates international humanitarian law be part of the UN Human Rights Council? The elections are next week. Russia is running for a seat. It is up to member states uh, to vote and to decide who will sit on the, on the council. That's... Um, all right, let me get uh, Imran and I'll be right back. 